The next morning Sempi and Mathavi, Madhurandhagar, and Punguzali left for Tanjavur. Pani's son-in-law and Vandiyathavar were planning to go to Vrayur and Srirangam. On his way, Aralmas Hivarma had said that he would show Vandiyathavan a barrage built to store the water of the Kaveri River during the Chola period of Karikala. Before their departure Pani's Selvar went to Kundave Devi to bid farewell. Sister! Do you have to go to the old room? Said. Brother! Do you have to go to Vyur? Shouldn't you come with us to Padayare? She asked. No, sister. We have told you to meet Alwarkadayan in Vrayur for an important matter. He said. Aha! You are not a role model, brother. Your mind is very corrupt. You do not idealize me. I assume that the reason for this change is that Valadu is a friend of the king. Don't lay the blame on him in vain. Aren't I sorry, sister? I'm going to be crowned emperor of a great kingdom. Shall I no longer do as I please? Well do as you please. If you don't show your authority over me. If you don't tell me to do as you please. Just come to the coronation. Then do as you please. After the coronation, you may exercise authority over me. What right have you to compel me until then? So, you're not coming to the coronation. That's Vanati's choice. If she wants to go, I'll come, if not, I won't. Where is that girl, sister? Your mother has gone to worship Pani Nadi. She has gone to pray to bless you with good intelligence. The prince smiled and said, May her prayer be granted. I am leaving. Brother. I have never seen such a cruel person as you. Vanatha did not sleep all night. She was thinking about it. Go to Kaveri Padatura and bid her farewell. Said Kundave. What's the only thing she doesn't sleep? It seems like she took away my sleep too. Vimy should be crying if you don't know how to know each other's heart. Do you want me to suffer for the rest of my life holding such a woman? Pani's Selvar said and hurried to the back of the palace. After crossing the garden, he saw Vanatha sitting on the steps of the Pani River and taking flowers from the nearby plate and placing them one by one in the flood of the Pani River. If Vanati had not been performing such rituals, she would have appeared as a golden statue of a woman set up in the Kaveri sector. Pani's Selvar went silently and sat on the top step behind Vanathi. It should be known that someone is coming to Vanathi. She seems to know instinctively that he is Pani's lover. So without looking back, she stopped performing the ritual and remained idle. A couple of snowdrops were found on the petals of the flowers on the plate. Two teardrops like pearls shone on the petals of the Vanati's eye flower. As the golden rays of the rising sun mingled with the soft waves of the Pawnee River, the golden hues of the Chola Empire seemed to permeate the blue silk sari. On either side of the blue silk sari, like the banks of green-colored silk, flourishing green oases were visible on both sides of the river. In harmony with the sweet melody played by the flow of the Kaveri, the oases on both sides greeted each other with auspicious hymns. The place, time, and circumstances were perfect for daydreaming and wandering in a fantasy world. The prince was silent for a while and then asked, Vanati. Are you daydreaming? Have I disturbed your dream? Said. I only dream by day, sir. But how can you destroy my dream? Even if I dream at night, you are the protagonists of the dream? That is why when you look at yourself, is this a dream? Realization. I doubt that. Come on. It is becoming impossible to call it. Yes, Swami. I have had so many daydreams for so many days. When I first met them in the Tyrannalam Palace Garden, I thought they were elephants. I thought many times later that they were not ordinary elephants. They were just elephants and followed me behind them. Many times I imagined that I was mounted on it and then I never imagined that I would be mounted on an ordinary black elephant of this world. It appears that I am riding on the white elephant called Aravatam in the heavenly world. Think of yourself as Devendran and I as Indrani. So now. Vanathi interrupted Pani's Selvar who tried to interrupt and continued. 
Wait a moment, O oh king. I will immediately change the idea that Devendran is Indrani. What is the relief for Devendran and Indrani? What time will there be for them both to climb the Aravada alone and go on a blissful journey? Should the gods and goddesses always kill each other? Therefore, I will immediately change that idea. Born in a royal family, I will live on the coast without rings. I wonder if I shouldn't have been born into a boatman's family. I see, Vanati. I see. You are jealous of the flower. Yes, it is true. I am jealous only of Punguzali Devi in this world. Her wish has been fulfilled. She and her lover are going to go to Kadakare and lead a happy life, rowing a boat in the ocean of waves and serving in the Kulagar temple. Why won't he laugh at me? He will only laugh. Sir. Who else? Punish me in any way you can. Don't just make Punghuali Devi laugh at me. Pani Selvar recalled what had happened on the first night and said, Vanati. Be patient. Wasn't Pungazali laughing at you yesterday? The time will come when you will laugh at her. Swami. I don't want to laugh at Punguzali Devi. I don't want to laugh at anyone else. Let anyone smile at me. I only wish to see a smile on their golden face sometimes. Their faces light up when they see and talk to others. Their brows furrow only when they see me. Even now to see themselves. I'm scared. Eyebrows are furrowed. I fear that you will stand in the way of all the things I want to achieve in my life. Swami. They don't want that fear. I will not be a hindrance to their affairs. The sound of the murasas and the cries of the war elephants attract me. No one can stop me, Vanathi. But trying to prevent it can make me lose my peace of mind. Swami. I will never do that. I will not try to stop them. Even if I cannot help them who are born to rule the three worlds, I will not stand in their way. That is why I refuse to sit next to them in Chola Singh Athan. Vanati. Chola Lion Throne is big in glory but small in size. Only one person can sit in it. Another Lion Throne should be set up next to the Emperor and the Emperor should sit in it. Swami. I don't want a place in the Singh Gadana where you sit. I don't want a place near you in a separate Singhudahana. Let the one who has merited to sit in the Singhudahana as your Padamakishi get that blessing. If you give me a little space in the Singhudahana that is your heart, I will be happy considering that it is the benefit of the penance I have done in seven lives. Vanati. You asked what I could easily give. You have already prepared a place in my heart's Singhudahana. There is no obstacle in my giving it to you. Don't you really want to be the empress of this great Chola empire? Vanati Kandar to put on your head a golden crown studded with Navaratanas that shine so bright that your eyes shine. Don't you want to? I have no desire to do so. I have seen the ancient bell crowns of the Chola clan. I have held them in my hands. If I put one of them on my head, I fear the weight of it would crush my head and stiffen my neck and make me suffocate. I am not so strong in my body. I am not so brave in my mind. Dot Swami. Let those who have the strength and courage to bear the crown of beads woven by the Navarathanas bear it. Before they depart for the lands beyond the seas, give me another gift and leave. I will pluck beautiful flowers from the palace Nandavan and garland them. Wrap that garland around my neck, which I can easily carry, and make me their slave. Take it and leave. I brought you a garland of Navaratna from the Chinese traders as a blessing gift. Why give me a present for their christening? Well, don't. I'll give it to someone else, Vanati. You and I will make a deal. Before I leave, I'll make you a wreath of your choice. Instead of the bridal wreath I'll make, you'll wait with every flower wreath every time I return from foreign lands. You must wait for me with a garland of victory whenever I go to far-off lands across the seas and plant the tiger flag and return with a victory shout, said the prince. What's one wreath? I'll hold on to a hundred wreaths and wait. All the people of this country will wait. Said Princess Vanathi.